This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna be talking about, a little bit about ammonia, a little bit about nitrite, the nitrification process, and at the end, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the UV sterilizer. These are some of the questions that have come in. Once again, if you guys have questions, submit them down below in the comment section. Email brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com and we'll um, go ahead and see what I can feature it in on one of these um, episodes. So let's jump right into it. The first question here comes from a gentleman by the name of Eric Lynn. What the heck is going on, Eric? What's going on, my man? So he says, so you really want water conditions where ammonia is largely converted to ammonium. Yes, that's true. Ideally, that is what you're gonna, that's, that's what you're gonna wanna be aiming for. Um, we know that ammonia, it's, it has two shared forms pretty much in, um, in your, your water system. And that's gonna be ammonia and ammonium. And depending on you know, a few factors, that's what's gonna determine how much percentage of that ammonia is available. And ammonia is what we're worried about. That's what's toxic to the fish. So factors such as water temperature, pH, and salinity. Those are gonna be the three factors that's gonna determine how much of that ammonia is available uh, or present in the system. And it's not gonna be so much to deal with um, salinity because salinity is gonna be, you know, it's, it's such a small amount in aquaponics. The primary factors are gonna be your pH and your water temperature. Those are gonna determine, you know, how much toxic ammonia is gonna be available in the system. You start going lower on the, um, the water temperature, lower and the pH, it's gonna be more ammonium. You're more in the safe zone. You start going above, you start going high, like above seven and start going, you know, higher on the water temperature scale then it's gonna start transitioning more into ammonia, all right? So it says, pH seven and 68 degrees seems to work, but is that too cold for most tropical fish? Yeah, pH seven and 68 degrees, uh, as far as the amount of ammonia that's available, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a relatively small amount of ammonia, about 0.396% of it. Some of you guys that have the aquaponics guide manual, I have a chart in there where you can you can kind of reference the water temperature and the pH, kind of match them together and find out what percentage of ammonia is available in there. So with a pH of seven and uh, 68 degrees, it's gonna be about uh, 0.396%, relatively you know, small amounts of ammonia, nothing to worry about at all. But is it too cold for tropical fish? Um, yes, it is gonna be too cold. If you want, you know, oh my God production, if you want like the oh my God production, like wow, look how much production I'm getting, 68 degrees for tropical fish, you know, that's not gonna uh, cut it, right? They're gonna want higher temperatures for that. So that's kind of like the, the problem you're gonna run into with that. So it's not, it's not rare um, for, these, for this system here during the winter time to go down below 68 degrees. And once you start seeing the temperatures drop with raising tilapia, which I have here, which are tropical fish, you start seeing them drop, coming from like the 80s, going down into the 70s, and then moving down to the 60s, you start seeing the feeding habits drastically change. Because we know that fish metabolism is a function of, uh, of water temperature. And fish are poikilothermic, meaning they're unable to regulate their body temperature. So the water temperature is gonna be a direct reflection on their metabolism and how much they eat, right? So we start tipping down going down in the low 70s and the 60s, you're gonna see them start getting lethargic. They're not gonna to to really wanna be eating like that. So, and that has an effect on your nutrients, your nutrient input in the system. If they're not eating as much, obviously you aren't gonna be able to grow as much. You know, that's how those, those two are interconnected. So when you start seeing, uh, or when the temperatures, temperatures start dropping, these guys aren't gonna be eating. They might take a, you know, they'll eat, they're still gonna eat, but they can, you know, it's not gonna be something they're super excited about. It's gonna be like, ah, I'll, I'll grab it because it's there. That's what it's gonna look like. You can notice it. They'll eat, I'll grab it because it's there. I'm not really hungry, but I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and grab it because it's there. But when you start seeing the temperatures rise, when you're up in the high 70s, 80s, around 80, 85 degrees, I mean, these guys are, 
they go from, ah, I don't really care about it, I'm not really hungry, to, man, I'm about to die of, of starvation. Right? So, big difference there. If you want Oh My God production with tropical fish, you're going to need to have the temperatures higher than 68 degrees. That's just not going to cut it. All right? So, that's a big, big, big deal right there. Now it says, does this mean that cold water fish are hardier because it can survive in conditions whereby ammonia is, not, is largely neutralized to ammonium. To that, it's actually the opposite. Actually the opposite. So a cold water fish is gonna be more adapted to an environment that naturally has less ammonia uh, present. Because like we talked about, ammonia, the amount of ammonia that's gonna be uh, uh, present is a function of the pH and the water temperature. So in a lower water temperature, they're gonna naturally be uh, less ammonia available. So that vehicle that they have doesn't really have to um, be designed or, or doesn't have to be accustomed or, um, or naturally selected for, uh, um, to fight against a lot of ammonia or to be, you know, to be uh, highly adaptable to a lot of ammonia being present. Right now, when you start going higher in the temperatures, the warm water fish, those guys are actually going to be more hardier when it comes to dealing with ammonia. Right. Because the water temperature is increasing more of that ammonia, that toxic ammonia is available. That vehicle that they have has to be more adapted to higher amounts of ammonia or else they're not going to be able to survive. So it's actually the other way around. So in general, what you're going to want to look for is if you're running cold water fish, you're going to want your total ammonia nitrogen levels, which is your uh, basically when you run your if you have an API test kit, when you're testing for your ammonia, that's going to give you the combination of both your uh, ammonia and your ammonium. It's going to combine them to go uh, together for your total ammonia nitrogen. You're going to want that to be under one part per million. Excuse me. Right. For cold water fish, warm water fish. You can, you know, you can go up to three parts per million and not be, you know, too much in the danger zone, you know, because they're more adapted to that, to, ha to, to being in uh, an environment that is more um, uh, ammonia, that has more ammonia present. So that's what you're going to experience. Now here with this system, ammonia really, you know, when you have a balanced system in aquaponics, it's really not that big of a deal and, uh, um, after the initial startup phase. For here in this system, my ammonia levels, when I check it, we're talking about 0 0.25 parts per million. That's pretty much it. Nitrite levels are pretty much zero. But here, ammonia is, you know, it's not going to be something that's going to be, you know, too crazy. But it's still something that you have to uh, pay attention to, and it's still a water quality parameter that you do have to keep checking upon here and there just to make sure everything is, you know, still in check. All right, so hopefully that answers your question, Eric, and uh, thank you for submitting it, and uh, hopefully that uh, gives you some feedback and for the rest of you guys as well. So let's jump into the next question, ladies and gentlemen. And this one comes from Julius Ao Wang Lee. What's going on, Julius? Let's see what you, what you over there yapping about, man. It says... Should I only add fish only when the ammonia reading and nitrite reading are zero? So this is a good question. Very good question, Julius. Now, this is going to depend. It's going to depend. So you're talking about here, I'm assuming you're talking about a new system that, that is going to be starting up, and you're going to get your nitrification process going, and you want to start cycling your system. That's what I'm assuming you're talking about. And you want to know when is it okay so go ahead and add your fish in there. Do I have to wait until my ammonia and nitrite levels have leveled out and they're at zero? Or what the heck can I do? Now this is gonna depend on your experience. That's what I'm gonna say and the risk you're willing to take here, right? So if you're an inexperienced grower, you don't have any, you know, any experience in raising fish, doing aquaponics or aquaculture, you don't have anything, you're starting off, basically how I started off when I got into aquaponics, zero experience, then what you're gonna wanna do is you are gonna wanna wait. You're gonna wanna place you an ammonia source in your system, allow it to cycle, allow your nitrifying uh, uh, bacteria to start to colonize, 
start getting your ammonia oxidizing bacteria developing after about 14 days somewhere around there that's when you're going to see it peak your uh, um, ammonia activity is going to peak then it's going to start dropping then after around 28 days you're going to see your nitrite levels pretty much peak and then start dropping then after they pretty much level out then you can add your fish in there and then from there you can start feeding gradually start feeding you should have your you know your um your nitrifying bacteria should be well established and then they should be able to process the ammonia waste that comes off from the um from the fish that you've placed in the system so this is if you're an inexperienced grower you want to do things the safe route tiptoeing around you know you don't want to kill fish you're nervous shaking like a leaf scared to go to sleep at night that's no problem there's nothing wrong with that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but do you want to do it that way that's the safe route on the other hand if you're a little bit more experienced you've dealt with fish before and you have a a, a, a clear understanding on the you know the water chemistry how it works how the different water quality parameters are interconnected you understand how it um, works and functions and you got the magic touch then you do what I do. I add the fish right in there. I don't wait until no nitrite or ammonia levels are, are at zero. I add them in there, but you got to have the magic touch. You got to become the madman, the mad scientist in there, right? You got to know when to feed because at this time you're going to be feeding. You got living organisms in there that are going to depend on, you know, how much you feed. They're going to be relying on you. They're not going to understand when to stop feeding, when the ammonia levels are too high, nitrite levels are too high when they got to stop, when it's becoming poisonous. If you, you have the right water temperatures and their metabolism is kicking in, you're feeding, they're going to be eating up. Some of you guys might get in there feeding, like feel like you got to feed three square meals a day. They're going to be eating that, but those ammonia levels are going to be rising up slowly. And next thing you know, you keep feeding like that, everyone's bit the dust. All fish are dead. Right? So you got to have the magic touch in there. Feed a little bit, check your ammonia. Right? Maybe increase the feed a little bit more. Step back, go check the ammonia. Okay, my ammonia levels are too high. I got to fall back. I, ca I can't feed. I got to wait for it to, you know, kind of drop down. It might be raising a little bit too high. I'll just leave it there for a little bit. Fish aren't going to die if you don't go. They, these days, they're not on the American diet. They're not going to die if they go two, three days without eating. They'll be absolutely fine, right? So you step back, feed a little bit more. You know, it's, it's a magic touch. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a dance going back and forth. You understand how to do that. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's nothing crazy or anything like that. Every one of you guys will be able to do it if that's how you, you know, if that's how you want to get down. But that's how I do it. So, and eventually you'll start seeing the nitrite levels rise up. Then you wait for them to drop down or they'll, then they'll eventually drop down. And then you can start picking up the feed, you know, little by little, picking it up, picking up the feed until you have your colony your nitrifying bacteria, uh, bacterial colonies established, and then you're just feeding. Then you can do your, you know, you can feed pretty much until they um, consume uh, as much feed as they want to eat. All right, so that's how I would break that down. Inexperience, you know, go ahead and wait. You know, you're a little, you know, you, you may not be confident enough. You may be a little worried. I'd wait. If you have experience, then I will go ahead and, um, um, then you could, you have the option to go ahead and add your fish in there and hit them with the magic touch all right so hopefully that answers your question julius and um let's move on to the next one all right so the next question comes from muhammad salah and it says hi brooklyn how are you my friend i've been watching your amazing videos a while and i have learned good things from them well i'm doing absolutely fabulous Muhammad, and thank you for watching. I appreciate your um, your comment. I've seen all of your AST filter videos, and they are great as well. I would like to know what is the name and model of your UV sterilizer attached to your endurance filter. Well, the endurance filter right here, this one doesn't have a, um, a UV sterilizer attached to it. I'm assuming you're referring to the bead filter, the bubble bead filter. The one that's over there. That's where the UV sterilizer is at. Right? So that UV sterilizer there is an aquatic ecosystem smart UV HO sterilizer. And the model number is E50S. 
and I got this from a company called Pinair. You can find them online. Just call if you're interested in getting a UV sterilizer. Just call, talk to a technician. They'll ask you a few questions, you know, um, uh, about your system, about your aquaponic system, and then from there they can determine which type of UV sterilizer. Um, is most suitable for your circumstance. Now I got the UV sterilizer um, primarily to control algae because these, uh, this system here has, you know, has the, uh, the windows on there and the light has direct contact with the water which is going to encourage algae. So I just wanted to test it out, put a UV sterilizer on there, see how it works, reduce um, the algae growth and so far it's doing pretty good. So it's not something that's absolutely necessary for aquaponics it's something I want to test on there and try and um, see you know the benefit see if the benefit uh, benefits outweigh the cons and to see what type of um, you know uh, assistance that I can get with using a UV sterilizer so it also helps with um, reducing some of the pathogens that could affect the fish and you know cause different breakouts so it has um, multi uh, uses but primarily I use it for the you know the algae growth and for you know some of the pathogens uh, pathogens as well so that's the UV sterilizer you know like I said optional um, some of you guys might want to test it out try it out that's up to you you can you know like I said pin air talk to a, a technician and then they'll hook you up all right so with that being said these are the aquaponic guide Q&A for today like I said if you guys have questions submit them below in the comment section or Email brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com. Put you guys in the queue. We got questions in the queue. I'll be answering them slowly um, uh, whenever I get around to, uh, to doing it, but um, I will get to them. So, with that being said, um, also you can visit the school of aquaponics.com. Get in there, enroll in a free course. Um, click on the link down there below, get in the free course, get enrolled in the school. We got other courses there for sale that you can go in there and check out as well, and something that's going to help you out tremendously all right so with that being said this is brooklyn saint michael with the school of aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car